The next uh, presentation and speech is again electric propulsion. And we'd like to welcome uh, Steve Bruce, he's the global OEM sales director of ePropulsion. And he will talk about uh, ePropulsion's solution to electric and intelligent boating. Welcome. Welcome, Steve. Yeah, that's what they told me. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Can everybody hear me okay? Great, thank you. Okay. Um, so, well, thank you for being here. I really just want to spend a few minutes uh, just telling you a little bit about e-propulsion for, for those of you that have never heard of us before. Um, so, going straight in. Uh, e-propulsion uh, started 10 years ago now. We just started, celebrated our 10th anniversary in uh, December uh, last year. The, the company was formed in uh, Hong Kong uh, University uh, by our three founders and they very much had the mindset from day one that the mission was all about the electrification of, of boats. Um, in those 10 years, we have seen quite incredible growth. Um, it, it, it's been quite an amazing journey. Uh, and, and now we find ourselves at a point where we have got several products that cover several applications. E-Propulsion's mission is very much to be uh, the market leader uh, in this market. I think uh, we're well on our way to achieving that. Uh, so, uh, if we take a little bit of a look, uh, back in 2012, where it all started, um, and it, the, the first product was actually a six kilowatt motor. Um, it, it, and the idea of that one in particular was for some fishing boats, uh, particularly in Hong Kong. Um, but then, after a couple of years of development, uh, we had worked out that what the market was really looking for was uh, a little replacement motor for the smaller outboards, your three, four, five horsepower, uh, high volume uh, motors. And um, there were other solutions available on the market, so we were looking at what could we do to, to, to add some value to that. And the Spirit One, the Spirit One was our first motor that had the, the direct drive, so uh, no gearbox in there, so no noise uh, and, no, and no maintenance was the big attraction uh, of that motor. When you put it next to other motors that were available on the marketplace, the no noise thing clearly had a, had a big effect on people. Uh, that's what they were looking for. Um, so once we'd figured out that that was the product people were looking for, then the distribution channel started to open up. Um, and um, very quickly, people were getting excited about the possibility of getting involved with that. And we got ourselves uh, quite, quite quickly to a point where we have fairly global coverage uh, for these products. Uh, we then bought our own production facility uh, in China, um, uh, in Shenzhen. And actually, more recently, we've just uh, bought an even bigger uh, facility. We've now got a 10,000 square meter facility uh, in Shenzhen where we manufacture everything ourselves. We, we, we make our own batteries, we make our own motors, we make our own controllers. The complete system uh, comes from e-propulsion. Um, from the successes we had with the smaller motors, we then started to look at how we could get into uh, larger motors for pushing bigger, heavier boats and, and pushing them further. Uh, so then the, the uh, Navy 6 and the Navy 3 were revised. Um, and again, with uh, no gearboxes, uh, no noise, no servicing. Uh, and then to go along with that range of motors, we, we, we came out with our own uh, range of batteries, giving you um, anything, anywhere between 2 uh, and 9 kilowatt hours per battery and the capability of paralleling these batteries. So depending on the application, we could take ourselves up to 144 kilowatt hours of capacity if that's required. Uh, and then jumping ahead a bit then to 2019, uh, we, we worked out that what we could do is provide hydro regeneration uh, in all of our motors. Uh, a lot of them go into the sailing markets uh, and, and that's proved again to be a very attractive thing because the first question is always, how do you charge your battery? Well, hang it off the back of the boat. It'll charge itself. Uh, uh, and that seems to be solving that problem for a lot of people. And then most recently, um, just last year, uh, we introduced our larger range of motors. The one you can see here uh, is our H100, uh, which can be wound anywhere between 60 and 140 kilowatts. 
Um, and then the, the, most, the latest series that we, we launched at METS, the I series, which uh, is between 10 and 40 kilowatts. Now, the I series in simple terms, that's a direct replacement for a diesel inboard motor. So your I10 could be a direct replacement for your um, 30 horsepower diesel inboard. Uh, the I20 could be your 50 diesel uh, inboard and your I40 can replace 70, 80 horsepower diesel inboard. So essentially with that motor there, we can cover the vast majority of certainly leisure marine applications for inboard motors. The H100, of course, now we're up to pushing vessels up to perhaps 30 meters and 200 tons. Um, so, so, we're, so, so we're starting to cover a lot of bases, uh, you know, more and more applications. It's now becoming economically viable to electrify. Uh, so yes, you can see that that growth has now led us into 60 different regions, over 400 dealers. So pretty much anywhere you are in the world, you're not going to be very far away from somebody uh, who can look after you uh, uh, with your motor. Um, the market is growing at a rapid rate. Um, and, uh, well, we are growing with it. Um, so here we can see the whole range, starting from the last, the very first one, uh, 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 and that's the latest evolution of the Spirit uh, 1. Uh, so the Spirit 1 Plus, essentially, we, uh, when we first started, we got one uh, kilowatt uh, into the battery. Uh, now that latest battery has got 1,276 watts in there. So with a one kilowatt motor, that would mean in reality uh, if you went wide open throttle, you're guaranteed to get an hour and a quarter out of this thing. <clears throat> but in reality, the little one kilowatt motor tends to get used in applications for smaller boats, tenders, that sort of thing, small ribs, three, four, five meters. In which case, in reality, you're only going to be using about three, four hundred watts of input power to achieve the, the, the speeds that you're looking at. So you tend to have two or three hours of continuous motoring available out of this or 10 or 12 miles, which means for most people, you actually only have to charge these things up every once a week or every couple of weeks in reality. Uh, you know. So the EVO range, if it's got EVO written after it, that then means that it hydro regenerates. Anything with EVO on it, if you're not using it to power the boat, leave it in the water when the boat's powering itself, and the prop is simply putting the power back into the battery for you, free of charge. Um, and then the pod drives, which are using exactly the same motors, exactly the same technology. Um, but now uh, these can be th uh, a, a direct replacement for a sail drive. Um, so sail drives, quite heavy, quite inefficient, quite complicated to fit. Um, a pod motor, bolt it straight on. Like the other motors, uh, the motor is actually in the torpedo, which is forward of the propeller. So again, there's no gearbox, so nothing to maintain and there's no water cooling because it's been cooled by the water that it's sat in. Um, and to give you some sort of ideas, the, um, the, the larger one, the six kilowatt pod, we've got that in applications with sort of 30 to 35 foot sailing yachts. Uh, and now we're starting to do some applications where there's twin motors uh, being used because of course with sailboats, previously you would typically only have one motor because there was only space for one motor. But um, no, you can have two, why not have two because it, it gives you added redundancy, it, uh, it, it gives you easier maneuverability. Uh, now you can drive your boat uh, like a tank, so that you know, parking becomes a very, very simple thing with two motors. Uh, you know, so, and also, you're doubling your capacity for hydro regeneration. Uh, you know, the, the, the bigger the motor, the, the, the faster it's going to put power back into the battery. Uh, you know, so. The I-series motors that you can see here, the beauty of these I-series motors is it's a complete system in one. Uh, you know, there's nothing else to think about, the cooling system, everything, it's all in there, ready to go. Um, so from a boat builder's point of view, it means that uh, you, you're going to save a lot of money in, in the time and the install. Uh, and and, and from, a, from, a, from a, a private customer's point of view that's looking to do a refit, it's a very simple, very simple thing to do. Okay. Um, giving you some ideas of the sort of boats that we can do. Obviously, river cruisers, that's an obvious one. The big advantage for the river cruisers of electric, no noise, no smell, no vibration. All of a sudden, the experience has become a much more luxurious experience. Uh, you know, so uh, this boat here, it's sort of working boats. Again, you'll find more and more cities around the world are starting to say that um, combustion is not accept acceptable in the city centers. So we've been developing solutions and, and uh, uh, working with uh, uh, PLO, uh, the, the, the London Water Authority, uh, to start converting all of the workboats operating in those fields to electric. It, it, 
it's remarkably simple to do. It, it's amazing that, that nobody's done it before because it, it just makes life better. Again, for the people on board, no noise, no smell, no vibration, no maintenance, no winterizing. Uh, and, and of course, the big plus is for the environment. We're not dumping all of that pollution uh, into the water. Catamarans are an obvious market that we're very attracted to. We're working with a lot of catamaran builders now, developing spe specific solutions for them. But if you think about catamarans, of course, the typical catamaran travels further than the typical monohull. And being bigger, they tend not want to go into marinas. They, 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 they want to be self-sufficient. But then again, they've got some wonderful real estate there for putting solar panels all over. Um, and of course, they've got two hulls so they can have the two motors. And, and, and again, the catamaran being quite efficient hulls, we're using less power to power them, and also they tend to go a little bit faster, which means that they can regenerate much more quickly as well. So the catamaran market I find a very exciting market because I would question why you would put a combustion motor in a catamaran now. Uh, and then, of course, power cats. More and more, again, uh, it tends to be um, sort of city applications that we're looking at where they're looking for alternative transport systems where they're looking to decarbonize and, and get rid of the pollution from their city centers and congestion, getting congestion off the roads. Uh, you know, so uh, this is just giving you some details again of the H100 up the top and highlighting the fact that, again, we manufacture our own batteries. Uh, this is a, a, a massive help in this market because what you do tend to find is if you're trying to use different systems from different people, uh, it gets complicated trying to get them to all play nicely together. Because we make our own batteries, we can guarantee that you get the maximum efficiencies out of both propulsion and regeneration uh, and the fastest charging times. Um, yeah, OK, tells you enough about that. Just looking at some customer cases to give you some ideas. Obviously, top left there, the little spirit motor, very popular on your small inflatables. A lot of fishing guys, very popular with the fishermen. Again, no noise, no smell, no vibration. That, that helps with the fishing. Um, uh, you know, tenders for yachts, fairly typical application. Uh, this one here, um, uh, uh, cruising boats, you know, day hire boats. This, is, this has become a, a booming market. And what we're learning from, uh, from the companies that we're starting to work with, where they've typically got a fleet of 50 or 60 or, or, or more boats, is they'll start by saying, OK, let's, let's convert 10 of them to electric and see where we go. Um, and very quickly, what they discover, the feedback that we're getting is that um, the 10 electric boats are the first ones that are hired every single time. Uh, uh, you know, there's the, no, no petrol boats leave the dock until, until the electric boats are all hired out. So very quickly, you find these companies are coming and replacing all the other combustion motors as well. Uh, because again, it's all about the experience. Uh, you know, if you can get rid of the noise and the smell and the vibration, it becomes a much more desirable experience for particularly people that are perhaps not so into uh, boating on a regular basis. Uh, you know, so, uh, we're doing quite well in America with the, the bass fishing series. We do sponsor a couple of the fishing series. Uh, and these guys are really catching on to the, to, to the advantages of, uh, of electric. Some funny little day hire boats. Uh, we've even got a, one company in London that do floating hot tubs. Uh, you know, so you can sit in your hot tub in the middle of Canary Wharf drinking champagne whilst gently uh, motioning down the water. Uh, and then, of course, sailboats. Um, uh, my own personal passion, I'm a sailor myself. Uh, and we are getting to the point where we can uh, electrify pretty much any size leisure, leisure vessel. Um, uh, we're currently involved in, in an installation on a 28-meter uh, sailing yacht uh, with one of our H100 motors. So, so anything smaller than that, no problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, OK, uh, this is one of the first projects that we were at and got, uh, got involved with, RS. Uh, they came to us because they wanted to develop a boat, and, and it was very important to them, the environmental credentials. And, and it was very important to them that it had an electric motor. Um, they, they, they were struggling to come up with the right solution. Um, we were approached by them uh, to help. And uh, on the top right, you can see the solution that we came up with. The idea is that it's, a, it's one of our standard um, spirit motors. Uh, but we've modified the top so that the whole thing can be retracted into the hull. Um, so then you've got a completely flush hull when you're racing. Um, and that particular system, from, from the point where RS asked us uh, if we could help, within five weeks we'd designed it, prototyped it, flown it over, stuck it in a boat, tested it. They loved it, and, uh, and they ordered a large amount from day one, and, and, and the RS is becoming quite a successful um, uh, product now, and pretty much everyone that goes out the door uh, has one of our electric drivetrains in there. Um, 
SailGP, uh, we sponsored, uh, 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 we became uh, partners, sorry, I should say, with uh, SailGP because they were very much keen, uh, uh, if you're familiar with the SailGP circuit, one of their um, goals is by 2025 is the entire uh, race series should have um, zero emission uh, carbon. Um, so we've started with um, each one of the F50s uh, has its own tender uh, for, the, for, the, for the team to get in and out from the uh, tech base uh, station to work on the boats. So we've supplied the motors for all of those. Um, and uh, with their Inspire program, we've also supplied the motors to go with their uh, folding ribs, uh, which they use for committee boats um, and, and all sorts of uh, uh, things there. Uh, and rather interestingly, I've not got any slides on it, but more recently we're working on a project with um, SailGP to, to develop a, an autonomous race mark, which I'm quite excited by. Uh, it sounds quite a luxurious thing when you, when you first think about it, but the advantages of an autonomous race mark, of course, is you've eliminated the requirement for that, that rib that, that you previously had to supply to get the race mark out there, and you've eliminated the requirement to anchor um, that therefore, you know, so you're, so you're not damaging the environment, you're not, not damaging the seabed. And from a sailor's point of view, the beautiful thing about an autonomous race mark is um, uh, if the wind changes, which it invariably does two minutes before the race starts, you've only got to press one button to, 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 to move the race mark to the new position to, to make sure the line bias is correct at the start of the race. So, so I think that's going to be a, a game changer for, for your racing. And again, that's, that's using our um, Navy motor uh, technology inside that. OK, um, some more customer cases uh, in America. Uh, pontoon boats, a very big thing. I know no, they're not really catching on in, in, in Europe, but it's a, it's a massive market, and it's getting bigger and bigger uh, in America. Uh, and Crest were one of the first um, to specifically design a boat to have one of our electric motors in there feedback we're getting from them is, is quite exciting. There will be bigger pontoon boats with bigger, faster motors coming soon. Uh, Freedom Electric, again, these little uh, fishing boats, that's a very popular thing in America. Um, not so much here, admittedly, in Europe again, but um, uh, we do have some European stuff to talk about as well. The um, day hire boats we've already talked about, both Skipper and, uh, and, and day hire, more and more certainly in, in the UK and in Northern Europe, you can see lots of boats, the Dutch sloop type boats. Uh, these are all, uh, uh, you know, you, you, can, you can operate it yourself, even with absolutely no boating experience. And again, we're getting the feedback that that's, that's becoming very attractive because for a lot of people who have no experience of a combustion outboard, it can be quite, quite a daunting thing, you know, ropes to pull and all of the vibration and, and the noise and the smell. That's all gone uh, with an electric motor. So you find that people are very comfortable very quickly with an electric motor. You press the button, it's on, it's making no noise, and you've got a screen that's telling you everything you want to know. How much power you've got in the battery, how much power you're using at this minute in time. Um, uh, therefore, it, it can also do a calculation for you, telling you how long you can do whatever it is you're doing for. So it's, it's just a much, uh, you know, it gives people confidence uh, where previously they might not have had much experience, you know, so. Um, and, and again, the ferry experience, that's a game changer. I'm sure you've all been on small ferries that are getting you from one small island to another and they're noisy, smelly things and you're shouting over each other and you can't have a sensible conversation. Well, it's a game changer now when the, when the motor is silent. Um, you, it becomes a pleasurable experience. Uh, you know. Uh, some stuff that we've been doing in, in China, where, where everything is built, uh, uh, as our facilities in, in Shenzhen, and this was one of the first uh, fairly sizable um, uh, commercial projects, which I think involved about 50 boats. Uh, and that was everything from the boats that the, the, the organization used to keep the water clean, getting all the surface, water, getting all the surface rubbish off the water, down to the actual boats that, that, that people can hire to use for themselves. And then even the little fun things. We do all sorts of strange little projects we get involved in with uh, little fun boats, because again, children can operate these things quite comfortably. Um, uh, we can program the motors uh, to any safety parameter you require. We can limit the speed. We can limit the, 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 the area that it can operate in. We can do all sorts of things to just make this a very safe experience that you'd be happy to let your children enjoy. Um, so where are we going now? It's worth telling you a little bit uh, more about that. As, as you've seen, we've developed quite, a, uh, quite an extensive range of motors to cover quite an extensive range of applications. But where are we going now? People are asking for more and more stuff. 
If you've got an electric car, your electric car tells you pretty much everything you want to know, and in fact, they practically drive themselves. Well, that's exactly where we're going with, with, with boats. Obviously, we can communicate over various different protocols. We can use various transducers to sense whatever information that is you're looking for. Uh, and then we can set you up with a system that can give you whatever information that it is that you need. So again, for a commercial operator that's operating a fleet of boats, uh, you know, we can set that up so that you've got a screen that tells you uh, where your boats are, what state of charge they're in, how quickly they're being charged, how quickly they're being discharged. Uh, in short, if you're ever to have a problem or you're aiming towards a problem, we can probably identify that problem before it becomes a problem and tell you about it before you ever knew about it. Uh, you know, so is the, is the wonders of technology. You know, the advanced driver systems, again, it's a bit like your car, you know, where it, the car will tell you if you're wandering out of the lane on the motorway, just to, you know, perhaps you should stop and have a cup of coffee. Uh, you know, we, we, can, we can have all that sort of capability within the boat as well. Autonomous docking. Again, that's the bane of everybody's life is docking the boat. That's the bit that can make the most seasoned sailor look like a complete plonker when he gets that wrong. Well, you don't have to have that problem anymore. You can simply press one button and the boat can put you exactly into the dock. And of course, we're working on that constantly because safety is a very important part of this. So we have to get it to a point where the machine is learning and the machine is capable of making decisions, better decisions, faster than a human could make them. Uh, you know. Um, so all of that's involved in this system that we like to call the e-propulsion smart system architecture. And quite simply, all that's telling you is we, we've got one core station, which is then linking to everything else. So everything is talking to everything. So we know exactly what's going on. Wherever the boat is, wherever you are, that information is available to you. Um, so again, we're demonstrating here that you can, uh, we can present that information in any which way you like. Everybody seems to like having it. I do everything on my phone now, my banking, my emails. Everything all happens on the phone. So why wouldn't I want to have all this information about my boat on the phone? Uh -oh. um, so again, all the sort of different things that we can do with that. Remote access, as I've explained, you could be anywhere. Um, really information, useful information about the, 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 the trips that you're doing whether that's making the information ready beforehand or whether that's looking at that information after. Again, safety aspects of that uh, become quite useful. Um, guest authorization. So again, you've just lost the requirement for keys um, because nobody can use your boat unless you've told the boat that it can be used. And even if you're not on the boat, then you can tell the boat that somebody else can use the boat. Very useful from a security point of view. Um, and then, of course, yeah, from a safety point of view, the beautiful thing about that is if there's ever any issues or everything, anything that needs to be looked at, all of that information is there, and we can pull that information out and present it in any way you like. There you go. Short and sweet. That was a little bit about e-propulsion. Thank you very much for listening, and if you've got any questions, I'll be delighted to answer them. We, too, have a stand here in Hall 10. We're on stand D42, where the complete range of products that are currently available are there. Uh, and plenty of people there to answer your questions also. Mm. That would, thank you, thank, thank you, you, Steve. That would be, have been my question, where, is, where are your products? Okay, okay. <laughs> but he is so professional. So, um, any questions from the audience to Steve? I think very intelligent product, I have to say. Thank uh, you. No? Then visit him at the stand, Hall 10, again, D, which one? D42 in Hall D42. 10. D42. Mm. Thank All right. you. Thank you, Steve. Cheers. Thank you.